First what we do is the bones of the cranium. We have the frontal bone, we have the two parietal bones, we have the occipital bone, that's green here, we have the temporal bone, and we have the yellow bone that's in the middle here, that's the sphenoid bone. See the ethmoid bone best on this skull, and now this is where I need you to make sure we can see it. Okay. These little small air bubble sort of bone structures on the inside of the nose. Then we have facial bones that we want to talk about. We'll talk about a few. We have the purple bone here that's the maxilla. We have the blue bone that's the mandible, the upper jaw and the lower jaw. Then when we flip this over a little bit, oops, we can take this off. We have the green piece here is the palatine bone. We have the red piece here that is the vomer bone. We have a couple more structures that we want to look at in terms of the facial bones. We have the green one here. It's a very small bone. We call it the lacrimal bone. And then the yellowish part, we call that the nasal bone, which is the top of the nose. When we look at the frontal bone per se, we have a couple of features that I would like to point out. One is the superciliary arch, which is the top margin of the orbit. It has a foramen, a hole, and that would be the supraorbital foramen. Through that hole, one of the structures we go through is the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. That gives a sensation of the upper part of the forehead. And then between the supraciliary arches is the glabella. When we look at the parietal bone, we see it one here on the side, this one. One of the structures we point out is the supraciliary superior temporal line, which is sort of like here. It's a little hard to see that. And then the parietal eminence is a bit above it, and that just refers to the widest part of the skull. The occipital bone, which we have in the back, one of the structures we want to mention there is the external occipital protuberance, which is the attachment for the trapezius muscle which is the most prominent portion of that bone. And one can often feel that by touching the back of the head. There is a little bit of a ridge. In the occipital bone, we have the foramen magnum, which is the big hole on the underside of the skull, which is where the brain stem <coughs> and spinal cord go through it. Then we have the occipital condyles. We have a foramen that goes underneath the occipital condyle that I'd like you to know, and that's the hypoglossal canal. The hypoglossal canal carries through the hypoglossal nerve. We have the condylar foramen, which is just posterior of the, of the condyle, of the occipital condyle, and that carries through the emissary vein. Then the occiput has a portion on the more anterior side of the foramen magnum, and that portion is known as the basilar portion or basilar portion. To the temporal bone, right here, we're gonna have a couple of structures that I want to point out. One of the structures is the arch that's been made, and that's the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Another structure is the hole on the outside, and that is the external auditory meatus, or also known as the external acoustic meatus. If you go slightly posterior to that, we have a pretty blunt process, and that's the mastoid process, right here. One more feature on the outside of the skull here, and that is the mandibular fossa, and that's the place where the mandible comes and connects and makes the TMJ, the temporal mandibular joint. And so that's right here. There you go.
do is a couple of structures on the inside, on the temporal bone. This is the posterior end of the skull. This is the anterior end of the skull. We have the internal auditory or acoustic meatuses right here. What we can see here is a ridge of bone, and that's the petrous portion of the temporal bone, holes that I'm naming. One here is the jugular foramen, and then the other one is the carotid canal. So the jugular foramen, or the jugular vein, comes through, which drains the inside, the internal jugular comes through, which drains the inside of the skull, of the brain, basically, and the skull, and then the carotid canal, which brings one of the main arteries to the brain. What we're gonna watch is the sphenoid bone. Now, the sphenoid bone sits inside here and goes across and through the skull. So it's a very interesting bone. The cella turcica, which means Turkish saddle, is in the middle of it and holds the pituitary gland. We take a model and just take it out of the skull. We can look at it like that. And what we can see, we can see the greater ring, the bigger ring, which is the greater ring, and the lesser wing. Here's the cella turcica again. And then on the underside, we can see the pterygoid processes. We have four of them. We have two on either side, a lateral and a medial. We look at the ethmoid bone, sort of like this model sits inside the nose. A piece that sticks up is right here. It's known as the Cristagalli, or rooster's cone. And then we have a plate that we don't see on this model too well, but it has little holes in it. And the holes are for the olfactory epithelium to come, receptors to come through and bring the olfaction, the smell, into the brain and then form cranial nerve number one in the olfactory bulb. And that's called the cribriform plate. Then we have the nasal concha, and then we can see the concha very well right here. The inferior concha, which is a bone by itself, Bring it in. Right here, and then the superior and the middle concha, right in this area. When we bring the middle portion of that cut skull back together, we have a very, very thin piece of sort of almost like paper thin bone, and that's the perpendicular plate that goes right up and down. Okay. Straight Can perpendicular. You Got that? Yep. The maxilla has a couple of things that we want to look at. One of them is the palatine process. And the palatine process is the roof of your mouth. Is it the green part or the purple part? The purple part. The green part is its bone, a bone by itself, and that right here is the palatine bone. And then the other structure, one of the other structures we have here is the infraorbital foramen, and that is right here. It carries the maxillary branch of the trigeminal, sorry, nerve, and it gives a sensation of this part, this part of the face. Interior nasal spine, and that's like this little pointy part of bone that sticks out on this skull really nicely, and it's the underside of the nose. And then we have teeth, and every tooth sits in what is known an alveolar process. Mandible is right here. It's the lower jawbone. And we have a few features we want to know here. One of them is the mandibular condyle, also known as the chondrular process, which then fits into the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint, or TMJ. The ramus is another part of the mandible, which is the side, and then we have a piece where the temporalis muscle attaches to, to close the jaw, and that's known as the coronoid process, like it's anoid. The front of the mandible is known as the mental process, the most front part of it. And then we have a mental foramen in the front also that carries the mental artery. And where the teeth are in the lower jaw, we also call these alveolar processes. That's it.